Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emmanuel Vereza. I graduated from Dartmouth College last spring and I'll be going to Harvard Law School next fall. Today, I'm gonna go over the CV that I used when I applied to Harvard Law. I had a lot of positive reactions to all the other information I shared with Harvard Law interview tips and things of that sort and studying for the LSAT. So uh, because of that, I decided to make this video. I had a lot of questions about what extracurriculars uh, would really help someone stand out in a law school admissions uh, cycle. So without further ado, I'm going to share my CV. I have my friend's fancy iPad here and I'm screen recording. So I'll hopefully try to put it in this area. Um, I blurred out, as you can see from my CV, I blurred out a few things just like names and such, um, but everything else I left it on. And so without further ado, let's get right to it. So as you can see from my resume off the bat, I have two pages and there's a max two page limit when applying to law school, um, specifically at Harvard Law, but I think most law schools have a two page limit. I also use a uh, Times New Roman size font or Times New Roman font size 10. The only reason I used size 10 was because I had a lot of activities that I wanted to add and I also added like extra spacing in between these sections. Um, so I actually don't recommend you go anything below 10. That's a big no, no. And I actually recommend trying to use size 12 just cause it's a lot easier to read. But if you have a lot to mention, uh, for sure, use up the two pages, size 10, the smallest font and always, always, always times new Roman. And as well, this is a format that I use. Maybe if it's helpful, uh, send me your email on, send me a DM on Instagram. First of all, this is my Instagram. Send me an email. I might put together a template. I'm not sure if it's helpful, comment down below. But without further ado, as you can see at the very top, I have my name, Emmanuel Berriesa. Then I put my address. Then I put my uh, Dartmouth email. If you're still in college or university and you have access to it, put your university email because it adds credibility instead of your Gmail or iCloud, don't use those. And then uh, my phone number, 702 Vegas Repin. Then I put my major and my minor. So I majored in government and I minored in English. Uh, nowadays, law schools are looking for a wide breadth of majors. So even if you're doing STEM or even if you're doing like pre-med requirements, you can still apply to law school. There's no pre-law track per se. Um, anything with strong reading and writing in particular is going to set you up the best. So I definitely recommend taking those. I loved the government and English faculty. I loved what I learned and I honestly just had a really good time. So I ended up choosing those two. And as you can see right next to it, I put my GPA and my class rank. So I was at the top 15% of my class. And if you have that information, it's important to mention what your rank is because a 383 at your school might look different than a 383 at someone else's school. So to give them better context, add your class rank to your CV. Um, I had this information on my transcript, but I decided to add it to my CV and just in case they missed it or maybe they looked at the CV first. I'm not really sure what order they look things in. So I made sure to put that. Next, I started off with my research. So I mentioned the two main things that I had research in. So the first one was an analysis on US ratification of UN human rights treaties. And the second one was analysis on user interactions with online platforms. So as you can see, I mean, you could read uh, exactly what the description was, but the key for these is to add what exactly what it was, as well as who you presented your findings to. So right here, I put, you know, presented to the director of digital resources. And with the first one, it was to my government professor. So don't forget to add uh, the description of what it was because the person reading it's not going to necessarily know what it is just based off the title. Um, and I really recommend doing at least one research experience, whether it's with a professor or otherwise. Um, but as long as you have one, I think you're in great shape. If you have two or more, perfect, add them all on there, especially if you publish stuff. So the next thing that I dove into was my professional experiences. So on this one, I talked about, oh, I basically just mentioned my time at JP Morgan. Uh, I put the location of every place. So I started off with the most recent. Keep in mind, I applied like spring of 2020, I believe. So this was summer that I was expecting to work there. And then I worked at our student center. It's called the Dartmouth College Center. This was in New Hampshire where Dartmouth sat. I put the date. 
the Speed Association, I was a public policy intern in Washington, D.C. I also put the date. I worked at the Ministry of Education in Paris. Um, that was like winter of 2019. And I kept it in French because the whole experience was in French. Um, so feel free to stay true to the nature of the internship as well. And Strategic Capital is an internship I did in Costa Mesa, California. This was in December. And finally at the district attorney's office uh, here home in Las Vegas. And that was the first internship I had my freshman summer. And as you can see from the way that I wrote my internship experiences is that I used action verbs. So I, you know, to conduct, to analyze, to maintain a safe student center. I advocated, presented, increased cultural and political awareness, tutored, observed, reported, analyzed, shadowed, translated, analyzed, right? And I also put um, the people that I directly worked under. So my supervisor, I put all the names were relevant. The more specific that you are, the better it is. That's the key to all of this. Add dates, add numbers. So other really good example is that I was doing banking in a $950 billion global capital market. And likewise, in strategic capital, it was a hedge fund in a $41 billion market. So if you have the stats, definitely add them. Um, if you have, you know, your supervisor's name and they're willing to, you know, vouch for you or maybe not still put their name because you worked under them and again add the dates make sure it's from the most recent to in the past and all right without that said we'll move forward to leadership and activities so uh i did well i founded the dartmouth latinx public service society again i put the date Basically, you can read it in the description, but basically, I just want you to increase more Latinx representation in public service. And I mentioned some of the things that we did as a club. I was also head delegate for Ivy Council. Um, again, I explained what that was because, again, when you're reading that, you might not know what Ivy Council means. So it's always really good to add context, 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 context. That's what your CV should provide, context. Um, I was also in the Dartmouth Magnuson Center for Entrepreneurship, so like our entrepreneurship club on campus. I put the date there as well. And then Alexander Hamilton Scholars. I was a fundraising ambassador and a mentor. And again, I knew how much money that we raised. So I made sure to add that statistic in there as well. And as you can see from all of the things that I wrote, I used action verbs, right? Aimed, coordinated, selected, attended, mentored, supported, right? So I was really specific in exactly the things that I did. No one should be guessing when they read your cv they should know exactly what you did when and with who and so that resume or i guess this resume really accomplished that so the next page of things that i did was the dartmouth class council so that's where i was elected and again i wrote some of the things that we did as a council the dartmouth leadership and development program it was like a leadership thing I participated at school if your school offers them you should attend it looks really great and you learn some valuable stuff and lastly I was a director of the Dartmouth Minority Pre-Law Association so there was this was actually the first thing I did fall of 2017 my first term at Dartmouth um, again the earlier that you show that you've sh that you've you know invested interest in this the better it, it is for you and then as always at the date then I personally had a whole section dedicated to volunteer work because uh, I dedicated a significant amount of my time volunteering. So Face It is a nonprofit that I founded back in 2015 of January. So I included that and also public speaking. I added the cities in DC, Paris, Vegas, Guadalajara, Yucatan, and Buenos Aires. And then the first year student enrichment program is like the student office or the student club at our school for first generation. Uh, students and it's also an office too so I mentioned like how I mentored some students while I was in my upper classman years I mentored underclassmen and something very interesting that I want to know is that I specifically put that at age 15 I filled out and paid thousand dollars for 501c3 status for my nonprofit, and I mentioned that because I feel like it adds a really important dimension of who I am as a person and Again, when you're able to do that and sprinkle parts of who you are, that's honestly what you should be doing to give the admissions committee a better picture of you. Next, we're gonna go to honors and awards. So um, I'm just gonna go through these because 
I don't think they're, I mean, they're important, but you could read them. Uh, so it was like the Oxford Exchange program I got into and a War and Peace Fellowship offered through my school, as well as the Dartmouth School of Business. I helped consult an education NGO in Peru. I also received like a scholarship for international affairs for a strong academic record and personal quality. I took that straight from the email that they gave me. Um, then Presidential Scholar, that's helped paid for some of the research I did. Bain & Co, it's a, it's a company. I like was a fellow and I flew to DC for a week. I did a little project with them. Ivy Innovation, it's uh, through Ivy Council. Princeton hosted a conference and I placed third in their pitch competition. DE Shaw is a hedge fund. I was a fellow for there. Future Global Leaders, it's a global fellowship. I don't, it's not running anymore, unfortunately, but um, something that I applied to my freshman year and I was selected one of 21 globally and then an essay that I placed first at Dartmouth. Of course, for all of these, you're going to want to include the dates where possible, the date that you receive them. And important things to note, too, is that I selected the competitiveness of the opportunity. So the Oxford Exchange was one of four people. While War and Peace Fellows was one of 20 selected from the most competitive pool in history. I got that from the email that they sent me. One of five fellows from over 100 applicants, one of two juniors. So and third place, one of 20, one of 21, right? So whenever you have any statistics that demonstrate the, again, context of how you applied and how it worked out, definitely add all of that as well. Last thing we're gonna talk about is additional information. So this is where you can get a little creative. I decided to mention my affiliations, which was mostly scholarships my skills, interests, and websites. So I'm just gonna go one by one. Affiliations, I mentioned like some of the scholarship programs that I've been a part of, like the US and Youth Program, QuestBridge, Christian Union, and my fraternity. Um, again, these are all things that weren't super, super important where I would like have a whole section for it, but things that I was still involved with that you know are still part of my college experience that I definitely wanted to mention. For skills, um, I added my languages, uh, public speaking, all that stuff. And then interests, uh, again, try to be as specific as possible because here, for example, I put, I'm interested in colonial and 1950s world history. At first, I just had history, but there's a very specific type of history that I'm most interested in. And so that's what I wrote. Um, social entrepreneurship. I, again, I had normal entrepreneurship, but again, specifying mostly social entrepreneurship. And lastly, I think this is like, a little hack is that I hyperlinked all of these. So I put my YouTube channel, my LinkedIn, and the nonprofit or the website for my nonprofit face it. And to hyperlink it, you just highlight it, right click, and then there's a hyperlink option so that um, if they receive your application through online, which they do, they might be able to click on it and then it'll take them straight to the webpage. So maybe they saw my YouTube videos, maybe they saw my LinkedIn, and hopefully they saw my uh, nonprofit's uh, website. So this is my CV and hopefully this was really helpful. Um, if you're looking at this video and maybe you're feeling overwhelmed because uh, you don't have that many things, do not worry. Law school is not gonna go anywhere. If you need more time to build your professional experiences or research, take the time to do that. It's really gonna pay off because not only will it just help you in your CV, it's also gonna help you gain real life experiences and skills that will translate over to law school. Um, again, I might make a template out of this where you just fill it in yourself. I don't know if that'll be helpful or not. So if it is, uh, comment if that's the case. Again, be sure to follow me on Instagram, send me a DM, and I'm happy to answer any questions where possible. Best of luck, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Talk to y'all soon. Bye.